My name is Meryl Friedman. Uh, my official title is Director of Education and Special Initiatives for the Center for the Art of Performance at UCLA. Anyway, so I was a theater major, and then I got an MFA in directing um, and in deaf education, and then one thing led to another. Uh, and yes, it has stood me in very good stead because um, I, I, I grew up uh, with, the, with the philosophy that no matter what, the show must go on. It always happens. It has to happen. There's people out there. And so that kind of backbone of like, you do what it takes, you do whatever it takes to make it happen. So I graduated from college and uh, spent a couple of years, you know, trying to figure out, you know, like, could I get an acting job um, at 21? Not really. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, we were out for a couple of years and a bunch of my friends who I graduated from Northwestern with said, okay, so we'll do our own. We'll make our own work. And, um, and one production led to another and then we bought a building and then we had a theater company and blah, blah, blah. And it's still around today in Chicago and life goes on. Um, and one of those people turned out to be my husband. I'm pretty collaborative. That, that is something else that um, working uh, within a theater ensemble for over 16 years did is that it's it taught me how to how to really work with others in a way that is not just about working with other people to get what you want, but working with other people so it makes what you want better and richer, which is an art in and of itself, which I learn how to get better at every day. Before I was a theater major, I thought in my head that I wanted to be a brain surgeon, I'm not kidding, um, an oceanographer, because I was really into animals and I wanted to do something where I could like meet a dolphin. Um, what else did I want to do? Oh, I wanted to be a teacher, and I, I taught for almost as long as I can remember. Um, and I wanted to be a singer. What I really wanted to do is to be a singer and a piano player. But I didn't think I was good enough, um, and I didn't have the patience to practice. So in a, in a really small nutshell, it's my job to kind of connect with people all over campus and to figure out who has great ideas and who's doing cool things and who w would be open to um, having the arts be a part of their lives if the arts aren't a part of their lives. And I would say at least once a week I, I meet someone that's doing something on this campus or in the community and I say, I can't believe you do that. I, like, every, I, I, this is my eighth year, this is the beginning of my eighth year here, and still it has the ability to really surprise me. It, I think that it's a siloed community here. I think that people have a tendency to operate really um, intensely within their own group or their own purview or their own practice and there's not a lot of um, there's a, not a lot of commingling um, at that that comes it, organically you know there's commingling if like there's funds for commingling or there's commingling if something is at the end of the rainbow certainly here the divide between north and south campus is large but um, from someone who teaches mostly non-arts majors in a large class in an arts class, the desire is there, the creativity is there. It's kind of this external, stereotypical divide, which I wish wasn't there. I'm very intimate with this notion of um, uh, within the academy, whether or not what you do professionally in the professional world um, is considered scholarly, and the and the pressure, the incredible pressure, um, on people who both practice and are academics. Um, to have to balance the two. I did not and do not uh, see that pressure. You know, I don't have a PhD, so I don't have what's called a terminal degree. Um, and at the point where I thought about going back to get one, I had already been working so long in the field that I didn't know. For me, it, it didn't make any sense um, to do it. Here in a university setting, uh, do I ever feel daunted by people who have those three letters at the end of their name. Um, no. You do what you do and you do it with heart and with an open mind and you do what you believe in and it is, it is valid. I never thought that like this, oh this is the path, you know, this is the path to that. But there isn't a path to this because the I mean, certainly institutionally, these kinds of jobs, as I'm sure you guys know if you're interested in this, are, are few and far between. Um, there are not a lot of them, unfortunately. There should be thousands of them, but unfortunately there isn't um, 
for a whole lot of reasons. And so what happens is you kind of wend your way is that, um, is that you, you become kind of um, flexible in your head and you become flexible in your skill set. So I've done so many things that allowed me to be able to do this job, but I hadn't had this job before I was in this job. I'm, I see it all the time that, that young artists are figuring it out. They're, they're, they're changeable, they're malleable, um, they're figuring out how to incorporate uh, what they're passionate about, about what it is that can be done. And, and you don't always, you, it's hard to put that on an application, you know what I mean? Or to, or to hold up and say, this is the path that I will follow. The world is so volatile at the moment. Culture is volatile, everything changes in a second. What was the norm three weeks ago? in three years will be like, could you believe I thought that three, you know, it's so different. Mm -hmm. So the advice I think is to do what makes you happy and what you're passionate about um, and what has meaning to you and, and to be f flexible and malleable and not to think of the flexibility as a curse, but to think of it as something that will serve you.